wiped down on this age of COVID. I guess I should also note here early on that the background again has changed. We got to the point now where my son is able to reach this set of shelves without needing to stand on anything and is able to pull things down as we found the other day. So during the day, those uh, project boards, those three-part project boards that have been sitting like this in the background are now going to have to sit vertically so they cover up that shelf too. And that just makes for a terrible background, quite frankly. So I guess what's happening now is I'll just be putting those back when I'm done recording each time and before recording, taking them down. Which is that now you can sort of see the way I've divided this up. Essentially from here up, that's the home video collection on most of these shelves. And from there down, that's the books I actually kept when I sold off my Legends and Canon collection. So uh, mostly signed stuff or choose your own adventure stuff that I really dig. Uh, or it's Russian translated stuff that I have a couple copies of. Um, you know, just random stuff like that. Whatever it tickled my fancy, so to speak, to keep. So, new background, basically just the old background uncovered, but that new organization that I don't think you would see, because as soon as I reorganized for the home video to be here up, I think that's when I started putting those boards up. So, this time we're starting out with actually something that harkens back to a couple of things we've seen before, which in one case is sort of a fan-made not really parody, but film about Star Wars fans done as a comedy, which is fanboys. But at the same time, also looking at something that we've seen before in terms of a fan documentary or documentary about fans or fan-made documentary about Star Wars, whatever you want to call it, which is The People vs. George Lucas. Before we start, though, I do want to make a quick note, a quick clarification and uh, correction. You may recall when we did our episode recently about Star Wars that uh, I noted the fact that not too fond of the idea that being you know, kind of promulgated by this cover just because of the idea of, well, it's kind of playing into that whole, you know, nerds want boobies kind of thing, um, kind of plays into the stereotype, but that I was under the impression, based on what you see on the disc, that perhaps this was done on purpose, because there was a Slave Leia cosplayer on the cover of Star Wars in the first release that didn't appear within the documentary, so people had asked about it over and over again to the point where they included an Easter egg of a quick little interview with this cosplayer on the second release. So given the fact that it's kind of grainy footage and whatnot, and obviously my eyesight is not perfect, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that, okay, well, not only did they play it up by saying, hey, we're going to bring this person back as an Easter egg, we'll just bring this person back a little bit older, because about five years or whatever had passed, and use that person all over the packaging, all over the discs, and so on. Well, it turns out this is not the same person a little bit older. I really couldn't tell from an eyesight standpoint, and I am certainly not a Slave Leia aficionado, which I think speaks more well of me than ill. In any event, this is Tanya as named in the second version, and then this apparently is a cosplayer named Christy Marie. So two different people, I had no idea, my thanks to the couple of people who pointed this out uh, within the comments for the Star Wars review. Unfortunately, I think it does, by making it this not the same person as that, takes away at least some of their possible rationale of being able to say, well, the reason why we went that route was because of people asking so much about this individual, so now the individual is everywhere. Well, if it's not the same individual, then it's just a, wow, everybody was looking for Slave Leia before, let's Slave Leia the hell out of this one. So I'm not sure that that actually helps the situation, but wanted to put in that clarification. Okay, so taking a look here at Fanboys. We've already looked at Fanboys with DVD, we've looked at it with Blu-ray. This is the Blu-ray we saw from the United States, lots of cool bonus features and whatnot, and our disc art for the U.S. right there. Well, just recently, I came across, or a friend of mine came across, a steal. I believe it was Brian Snook who found it. It was an absolute steal on a steel book, so S-T-E-A-L, for a S-T-E-E-L book coming out of Germany. It was a steel book of fanboys that's a little bit unusual. Now, because it was a steal, I wasn't all that super concerned when it actually arrived damaged. Uh, I paid very little for the item, very little for shipping. Not a shock, it came in a crappy little bubble mailer that had very little padding actually gone to the inside and got partially crushed in the mail. I'm not that crushed that it was crushed. But suffice to say, this is a special German steelbook of fanboys. And it's a little bit different because you'll notice up here, steelbook, and then it says something in German. Fanboys has the rating down here that's basically like a sticker that's on it, the Blu-ray symbol, the characters there with Vader in the background. Something they did not do in the U.S. probably because of the rights of Star Wars characters not being something that they had access to, for instance. Okay, So, kind of like a traditional steelbook, it does say uh, 
Uh, Cape Light down here, that's the Cape Light Pictures who's putting this stuff out. You look at the spine here, you got Cape Light, Fanboys, uh, DTS, HD, Blu-ray, and product number. What's weird about this as a steelbook is then this is the back. The back of this steelbook is what we would normally see on the J card, the cardboard piece that you would take off and then have art on the back of the steelbook. That's not what this is. This is actually J card type material on the actual steelbook itself, which is, in my experience, very, very odd. So you got your German quote, images from it, Kristen Bell. That one I know just because it's Kristen Bell and they made a big deal out of it with the film, of course. Fanboys, description, extras, uh, then some information about a bonus disc that's included, which we'll get to in a minute. And cast crew information, various icons and whatnot, like 1080 HD, blah, blah, blah. Company logos, back to this Weinstein has not aged well. Uh, then information about your language options, rating there, and so on. Right? Just like you'd see on a J card, only this time actually on the steelbook itself. Got a little advertisement for Cape Light films, most of which I've never heard of. But then the interesting part is that, one, you have here the Fanboys Blu-ray, right? Vader on it. Again, you would not have seen Vader on this in the United States because of rights issues and whatnot. As far as the iconography and whatnot, we have Blu-ray, Fanboys, Rating, uh, Region B, Product Number, Cape Light, Weinstein Company. Then we have, what is this, uh, Trigger Street, then Full HD, 1080, DTS HD, and Dynamic HD as well there. But unfortunately, I can't tell you much about the bonus features other than that, hey, they're listed on here in German, because this denotes, as many Blu-rays do not these days, that this is Region B, okay? So this Fanboys Blu-ray is actually region locked. You cannot play that in a U.S. Blu-ray player. If you need an all-region one, I do not have one to be able to play that at this point. So I was a little bit frustrated, but not because I bought this for fanboys. I already got fanboys on Blu-ray. It's the bonus disc that I was really concerned about. Because you may recall that in the past on this show, we looked at a documentary called The People vs. George Lucas, right? This, however, in the U.S. was only released on DVD. It's a very plain-looking disc there. But this was not something you could find on Blu-ray here, right? Well, the bonus disc on this Fanboys Steelbook Blu-ray release that is region coded as Region B is the Blu-ray from Germany of the People vs. George Lucas. So you have your Blu-ray symbol there, rating the People vs. George Lucas, various items underneath here. Uh, let's see, uh, Cape Light, uh, Cork Films, Salt, etc., etc., uh, full HD 1080, DTS HD, a little bit of legalese around the bottom and a tiny bit up there at the top. So Blu-ray of The People versus George Lucas. That was what I was really concerned about. And it turns out that that one is not 